Hello again YouTube and welcome back to Just Get a Tesla and on this week's video we are once again going to talk about range because Tesla are doing something really dumb. So if you've seen the previous video that I did on range you'll know that the mileage display on the main parts of the screen in your Tesla is wrong. It is test range it's not real range and that's what i think is relevant to most people how far will my car go when i drive it not when the laboratory test drives it when i'm driving it range anxiety very clearly is still a massive thing for a whole load of people who are new to EVs. I see it both in comments on my videos, comments on other people's videos, and I'm on all of the Tesla Facebook groups, and there really is some fear out there. Now, I've talked in the past about FUD, fear, uncertainty, doubt, and a lot of that is maliciously spread, mainly by right-wing media. But in this case, I think it's a simple lack of understanding. Now, this is one where it gets to a bit of confession time because I had a little bit of lack of understanding. And it's based on what that number actually is on the screen. In Europe, in fact, in most of the world, cars are advertised using a thing called WLTP range and performance and efficiency and all the rest of it. And WLTP is literally the worldwide testing protocol. Worldwide. America does its own thing because America and China has its own thing as well. But in essence, WLTP is the Bible these days for how far cars can go, how efficient they are, all of those other things. Except with Tesla. Because here in the UK, all of the advertising with Tesla is WLTP. And it's WLTP because it has to be WLTP. That is the measure. Except it isn't if you get a Tesla. So initially, I got a couple of comments on my previous video saying, uh, Ian, it's not showing WLTP, it's showing EPA. And I thought, well, it might be showing EPA for you in America, but I'm in Europe, so we don't use the American system. Wrong! <laughs> For whatever reason, Tesla use EPA as the mileage on everything that they have got inside their car, regardless of where they sell it. Now, I was engaged in a debate on Facebook with a photo of a Cybertruck towing a Model Y in a glass case. And it said on it, best-selling car in the world is made in America. Now, of course, Model Ys are made in America. But of the 1.2 million Model Ys that were sold last year, the majority of them were not sold in America, did not come out of Giga Texas. The rest were worldwide. So... For the vast majority of Tesla Model Ys sold all around the world, they are showing inside the American measure of range rather than the WLTP measure of range, which they are advertised on. And this is a bit where it all feels a little bit stupid. Why are Tesla advertising a range for their vehicles which their vehicles will never show in the place where people are looking for them. It really is causing confusion to an awful lot of people. So one of the posts that I saw on Facebook said that uh, my car is on 99% and it's got 256 miles of rain showing. That extra 1% is not going to add it up to 283 now, this is a Model Y rear-wheel drive, so it's the single motor in the back, and it's got the LFP battery pack, so you do charge that one to 100%. But the person said, well, it's only showing 256, and it's supposed to show 283. But it isn't, because the car, because it is EPA and not WLTP, it's only ever going to show 260 in that place. 
Now, first of all, I'm going to hold my hand up here. I got it wrong on my last video when I said that it was WLTP because logically, commercially, obviously, of course, it's going to be WLTP in most of the world where it's WLTP, but not with Tesla who are using EPA instead. Now, here is the bit where I think there's a real problem when it comes to FUD, fear, uncertainty, doubt. They have advertised that car, Model Y, rear-wheel drive, as having 283 miles of range. And it's only ever going to show 260 miles of range. You follow me? The problem with what Tesla are doing is they are inflating the number of miles that the car can do versus reality. Now, I know it's not their fault because they have to use WLTP, but it would be a whole lot less confusing if in all of the places worldwide, which is almost everywhere, that use WLTP, that the car showed WLTP. So the person who posted on Facebook is asking why it's not showing 283. It's only ever going to show 260. So the real range the car is showing is 8% less than he was told when he bought the car. 8% is quite a big chunk, especially if you're worried about the range on your EV. The reality here is very, very simple. If you want to know where the real range is of your car, at any given time, go to the energy use display and look at the 30 mile average and that will tell you based on weather, based on conditions, based on the way that you drive, that will give you an approximation of how far you can really drive. Look, I'm not going to push the point too hard in this video because I think we've done enough on range. But if range is an issue and it is an issue for most people who are coming into EVs for the first time. If it's an issue, then the fact that the advertised range and the posted range in the car are completely different is a real problem, a real problem, because people seem obsessed with range on EVs. And I really don't quite get it because, how can I put this, the average journey length in the UK is just under 10 miles, 10 miles, okay? So you are talking about, in that Model Y rear-wheel drive that we were using as an example, you are talking about basically two trips that are missing from the range of your car. But having already done 25 trips before you then think, I need to plug it in before I go and do the next one. So that's, what, 25 days of using the car on a slightly under 10 mile average before you need to plug it in with that car? Does it really matter? And the answer, of course, is no. In the real world, it absolutely doesn't matter. But we're still in the phase of adoption of battery technology. Sorry, the re-adoption of battery technology, because, of course, battery cars is where it started uh, before Henry Ford. So people are still a little bit, mm, I'm not sure about the technology and how far can it go. And this gap, it's an issue. And it really shouldn't be because Tesla has got one of the most efficient drivetrains there is. I think there's a, a huge number of especially premium the German cars out there where the range is really poor because the efficiency of the drivetrain is shocking. And really, BMW and Audi, it's you guys. Um, so for those people where they're reliant on non-Tesla public charging, where it's very expensive and a lot of them are broken, I kind of get it. But again, most of the trips that people do are short. If you're doing longer trips, just get a Tesla and the car will tell you where to charge. But I do wonder if this is going to do damage to the adoption of cars because the main thing that people seem to be saying on the Facebook groups and other things is my car's broken it won't go as far as it's supposed to do it must be broken or I'm doing something wrong or something and fine I understand the argument and when you explain it to them they're not necessarily happy 
So how on earth have we managed to get here? All Tesla needed to do was to program the algorithm to show WLTP. You know what? I know some people say, ah, oh, but WLTP isn't as good as EPA. Fine. But the reality is EPA is a laboratory test and WLTP is a laboratory test. Neither of them are real. They are both examples of range using the same test cycle on vehicle to vehicle to vehicle they're not the real world i don't even put the my listing up on my screen because it isn't the real world but i know a lot of people are absolutely fixated still on range and they do and the number that they're putting up on screen is wrong it's not just wrong based on the real range that the car can do it's wrong based on what tesla believe the car can do and that's the really crazy bit it just feels like one of those things where a bit like the Cybertruck towing the model y with best selling car in the world made in america nonsense that it's a little bit of exceptionalism now hey i'm english and we're brilliant at exceptionalism. Remember, um, easiest deal in history and holding all of the cards, all of that nonsense. We're brilliant at thinking we're brilliant when we're not. And unfortunately, this one appears to be one where there's just this assumption that it's right for America. It must be right everywhere else. And on that controversial note, I'm going to leave it here. Let me know in the comments what you think, what your experiences are, if it's an issue. Let's have a conversation about it. Like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Again, a lot of people are watching who aren't subscribed. Please, please, please subscribe. It's free and you can still ignore me by just not watching if you want. I'll just dip in and out. Watch the scenery videos of which there are more coming. And I will see you back here very soon on Just Get a Tesla.